this week you're getting ready to study photosynthesis in lab and I thought we'd do a little bit of an introduction to the kinds of things you'll be considering as you go into this week's lab. Hopefully you see in front of me I have two different plants here. I have this one plant that's sort of a yellowish green in color. I have another plant that must have different pigments in its leaves or at least different proportions of pigments in its leaves because it gives this purplish color and in fact this is the brina, a plant that you may have looked at under the microscope. So what of course is the function of photosynthesis? We know that plants make their own food, they're autotrophs. So photosynthesis is the process by which plants are able to produce organic sugar molecules for their own use for storage. And then of course we animals like to hijack that food source and use it as our own source of energy. But plants really, they're doing photosynthesis for their own use. And the primary organ in which photosynthesis occurs is gonna be the leaf. So leaves, their entire structure is really related to this function. They're flat, they're thin, they have a great deal of surface area through which they can absorb that energy that's present in sunlight. And then within the leaf itself, they undergo photosynthesis. So using energy in sunlight, they're able to convert inorganic carbon dioxide that they absorb through openings in the underside of the leaf through the stomata. They absorb carbon dioxide and through photosynthesis they use that carbon to produce sugars that they use to actually build their body. So that sugar is going to be the source of fuel for all the building activities, all of the anabolic reactions that occur in the body of the plant. Of course, what is the byproduct of photosynthesis? Well, one of the major byproducts is oxygen, but plants use oxygen in their own cellular respiration, just like we use oxygen in ours. So let's take a look at the textbook and how it coordinates with what you're gonna be doing in lab. So here's your lab manual and the textbook. And remember that in lab this week, you're gonna have several parts to this process. So make sure that you read the objectives and the basic steps in the exercise ahead of time. You'll be separating pigments using paper chromatography. It's gonna be important to be careful with the solvent. You'll be learning to use the spectrophotometer in order to determine how those pigments absorb light. And you'll be looking at how real leaves work to absorb carbon dioxide and produce a byproduct, which is oxygen. So several different things you'll be doing. Be ready for lab by preparing with your lab manual. And then when you're studying later, go ahead and open your textbook to chapter 10, which begins on page 145. And what you'll find is that there's some really valuable information here on photosynthesis. So especially on page 187, you can learn about the structures that are involved in photosynthesis. And I would also recommend studying the equation and the simple diagram on page 189. So the basic equation of photosynthesis as also represented in your lab manual, the basic uh, layout of the process of photosynthesis. And if we turn the page again, you'll notice that we could think about the wavelengths and colors of light that are involved in photosynthesis, which is what you'll be testing in your lab this week. Okay, so this week in lab, remember, you're going to study leaves and how they're used for photosynthesis. You're gonna develop an understanding of the pigments that are involved by actually extracting those pigments and studying them in terms of how they absorb different wavelengths of light, different colors of light. And keep in mind that plants are producing this food source for their own use and that animals hijack that food. When we eat plants, then we're actually consuming resources that the plant has produced for itself.